Hey everyone, in this really quick video, I wanted to go over the new QR code login option for your frontline workers. So the goal of this is you can create a QR code for each of your frontline workers, and then they can walk up to any kind of shared device using that shared mobile device, so it's iOS or Android or iPad OS. They can then as part of the logon, just use the camera on that device to scan their QR code. You'd print it off, put it on their badge or something. They type in a pin and they're authenticated. So the whole point of this is it's just a single factor. So I'm not going to want to use it for my information workers, people with access to more sensitive applications or data. But if I just have those frontline workers that have to access some fairly low security app and I want to simplify their logon experience, well, now I can do this. And things like additional access will still apply. So I can still do certain policies to say, hey, it has to be a compliant device or maybe a certain network or everything else. But I do want to stress, I would not use this for any identity that requires dual factor, that requires more security. This really is a very basic, and the goal is to make it a very simple experience where I have those people using those shared mobile devices. So the first thing I actually have to do is enable it. So here I'm in Entra, and what I'm looking at right here is under Identity Protection Authentication Methods, what we'll see is this new option of QR code. So we're going to go to that and we're going to enable it. So I've already done the enablement. Now, I definitely would not suggest you turn this on for all users. Instead, what you want to do is for select groups and then add those specific groups that have those frontline workers. So in my case, I create the group called frontline. So now it's enabled for those. And there's certain configurations you can do. So I can do things like, okay, well, what is the pin length? So that can be between eight and 20 digits. So it's just numerical. If we look at the documentation, it shows us, hey, the allowed is just the numbers. Everything else is not allowed. And it's between eight and 20. It does have certain complexity requirements. So it won't let you just, for example, do sequences or repeating digits. So it, it will try and enforce some basic um, complexity to that pin you're creating. You can also set a lifetime. So the default is 150, but this can actually go up to, I think, 395. Yeah, is the maximum you can do. So obviously, generally, the longer you would have the QR code valid for, well, maybe I consider making it a shorter duration. So the less complicated the pin, the shorter I probably want it to live. The more complicated the pin, maybe I'll let it live a bit longer. But I'm just going to leave all of these around the defaults. You save that. And now the next thing to do would be to enable it for a particular user. So what we'd now do is we would go over to one of those frontline users. So I'm going to go over to Barry Allen. And under Barry Allen, I would go to my authentication methods. So we have that right here. So what I'm now going to do is add an authentication method. And as part of this, my method is going to be QR code. I can set things like an expiration within that window. I can set my activation time. I'm just going to do now. And it can generate a pin for me, or I could enter one. Now, the user will have to change this on first logon anyway. We click Add. And now the really important thing is it's going to show me the QR code. I have to download this. So I need to save this image because I can't get this again. And what I would be doing now is I would be printing this out and maybe giving it now to that particular frontline worker to put on their badge to now make it easy for them to access so they can leverage this whenever they need to. So make sure you save this because I'm not going to be able to get it again. Now, I could just delete this particular QR code and create a new one whenever I want. So it's not like it's the end of the world, but I cannot get that QR code again. So that is the QR code. So now what does the experience look like? Now, I'm going to show you the basic experience just if I was using the Microsoft login page. Now, the key point here, though, remember, is the documentation walks through, and I'll show this to you in a second, 
it will walk through how you can enable this QR logon code as an entry point for your app. So if you have a frontline app, you can just make it so logon with QR code is right there on the first page. But I would click my sign in options. I want to sign into an organization and notice this option at the bottom, sign in with a QR code. I select that. Now I'm going to tell it to allow to use my camera. And sure enough, there's the QR code. And now it just wants me to enter my pin. So we made sure we gave that to the user. So they go ahead and enter it and they can sign in. Now, once again, on the first use, it's gonna make them change it. So you'd wanna make sure you give some instructions on how to use this to the users. And now they're done. And once again, as I was saying, the documentation actually walks through how you can make this QR code experience front and center. So if we go back to the documentation for a second, it walks through right here. Hey, there's that experience we just saw, but hey, I can just put this on my application front and center. And there's links in the documentation for how you can do that for your app, both for Android and iOS. And that's it. And as I showed you already, you can always go ahead and delete those. If you do the edit for that, you can just show you the delete. And there we go. Add a temporary QR code if they've lost their standard code. So they can then go and change it again. But I hope that was useful. Um, do not do this for your regular information works. And I keep stressing this point. This is not a super secure method. It's a single factor. But... Fantastic for those frontline workers. Until next video, take care.